Hello, Internet. Welcome back to the Blade Showcase for Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And as promised, we're going to be covering Praxis, the twin sister of Theory. Admittedly, she may seem a little less useful in comparison, but she's still a very solid blade overall, particularly if you're very passionate about, about using a Mega Lands character, but you're not super into driver arts, which is what Wolfric is all about, and you haven't quite yet rolled a Veil on your team. So, the first thing you'll notice at the affinity chart is that her special specials are actually kind of average in terms of their effectiveness. The level 3 combo, Fierce Deluge, actually could have been a lot more useful if it was available a little earlier on. In the same way that, like, Theory, the reason why her level 2 combo was so useful was just the fact that it was her job to, you know, take the aggro to do extra damage. And the same thing applies true for Praxis here, because, you know, you're, you're going to be attacking from the side most of the time, especially if you're playing as Rex, because she has a bonus uh, driver art that does extra damage when you're attacking from the side. The issue with this, though, is that because it's a level 3 combo, it does take a bit of time to build up. That being said, though, it's definitely worth it because it's an additional 150% damage right off the bat. The first two other combos, not that bad. I mean, reducing your aggro is fairly easy with the Mega Lance, regardless of whether or not you use a combo for it. But the thing about Prax Praxis, though, is that you also have to consider that she's Water-type. The Water-type is probably the most versatile blade in the entire game if your playstyle revolves around building building elemental orbs. You can build almost all the elemental orbs with water as the basis. It's really useful. Same thing goes for Geyser Spring. This is pretty nice because it's a 100% chance of guard annulling, and that's always something that you'll want to consider. But again, uh, you won't necessarily be spamming it as much. You'll mostly just be canceling your driver combos, stacking damage with a typical World Tree overclocking Pinkle build, but we'll get into that later. So, there is also her max affinity. This is very, very nice. The thing about Praxis, what makes her stand out in comparison to Veil, is the fact that she gets this nice bonus. It might not be as astronomically high as Veil's Violence Machine is with a 300%, but getting affinity at max, especially if you do max out the trust level, is fairly easy to do. Not to mention, Praxis is completely 100% obtainable through a side quest. In fact, in that quest chain, Praxis is going to be the first blade you'll get, and you'll You'll need to increase Praxis Trust to get Theory, who I've already said in the previous showcase, to be a really, really good Chrome Katana user. So that's Awakened. Uh, as well, when you're at max affinity, you get an increase of accuracy. This is quite useful because the thing about accuracy is that, it, you know, obviously it makes you hit, but the thing is, though, the more you hit, the more likely you are to get your arts ready. This is extremely useful, especially when you're playing late game, when you really need to rely on those clutch driver art cancels to build meter at the last second. It's very, very nice to have this, and it's a good bonus overall, so obviously getting max affinity will always be your priority. It'll be your priority for any blade, but Praxis really teaches players to incentivize that. And there's also Brimming Pep. This is quite nice if you can get the bonus. Admittedly, it is a bit difficult to keep your HP above 90% at all times, but if you have like a team heal like Poppy QT, or even a reliable healer like Nia on your team, then this should be pretty easy to do. Not to mention that one of the driver arts for the Mega Lance does bonus damage based on having high HP as well, so they do stack. So basically, like, you have a baseline 160%, and then if you're attacking from the side with this, then that's 310%, which is quite good. Not to mention that if you're working with the Overclocking Bengal slash World Tree drop build, then you'll increase that by another 250%, which you'll probably want to do anyway. It's kind of like practice for Veil. She's a very safe pick, in the similar way how I originally thought that Cosmos was like the, the safe pick for people that want to use Aether Cannons, but Praxis is definitely one of those, definitely fits the bill, and you can get her at the end of chapter 5, I believe, so it's quite quite nicely done, very accessible. So in terms of the Ox Cores, she only gets one slot, unfortunately, and again, for our purposes, we're going to use a Fast Blade Switch. I'm using the level 6 version that you can get from Cosmos's exclusive quest, but feel free to replace that with a Blade Switch 5, or even a 4. It still works pretty well, because again, in conjunction with the overclocking bangle, you don't have to worry about it too much. So, we're going to go ahead, cut the video, and I will take you guys to the demonstration.
Alrighty, so here we are at the old factory of Mor Ardain, and for once we're going to be fighting against a new boss. This is going to be Unflinching Saxton at level 99. A very interesting boss because he is one of the high level driver enemies that appear after you beat the game. So the thing that I'm doing right now is that I'm going to be starting off as Mithra, and the nice thing about using any blade with Rex is the fact that when you use Mithra, you have free cooldowns, meaning you can build up your orbs as quickly as possible. For anyone that has seen my Ursula video, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. We actually didn't build very many orbs using the character in question, but what I'm going to be doing here is that because we're going to be focusing on Praxis, I'm going to be building a Ruinous Weather Orb fairly easily, and also on the way to doing that, I'm also going to build a Light Orb. It's fairly easy to do because, again, water and um, lights are both very versatile elements, but water most out of all of them. Like, I think off the top of my head, you can build dark, you can be a component of an ice orb as well. It's like, quite a few. Like, yeah, an ice orb, I think a fire orb can also factor in. Just, all, like, I think every element except electric and light, like, those orbs are the only ones that you can't build or be part of building if you were using a water type. It's very, very nice. So here we are already building our light orb, and I'm going to go ahead and try to build ourselves the water orb, and then we're going to spend the rest of the fight as Praxis. So this particular fight actually might go by pretty quickly just because the damage output that Praxis will be capable of is actually quite high, and we're also currently running with a uh, World Tree drop, so we're going to quickly get into that the moment I can build my... Uh, Builds my Gamma Ray, so here we go again, just building those cooldowns, going straight into the combo. Trying to get to the level 2 combo as quickly as I can. You can see I'm already drawing aggro, but I'm not actually that worried about that, because the longer this fight lasts, the more we actually get to show off what Praxis is capable of. Now, one other thing that I've just remembered is that if you're going to be using a Mega Lens on Rex, I highly recommend having a either a Great Axe on Nia, or a Hammer on Morag. That's going to mean that... Yeah, that is going to result in more topples, and the more topples, the more damage you get. That simple. Okay, so we can get things started, go for the Ruinous Weather, and that's going to be the orb. What I'm going to do now is that we're going to all count together. This will be this will be our counting video. We're going to count to 21 to get the full effect of the World Tree Bangle. We won't even need to worry about breaking orbs. I don't even know why I built the Water Orb, or the Light Orb for that matter. Okay, so let's get to counting. So you need to get a total of 21. And because of the way that Mithra works, she'll actually cool. She'll actually have a uh, switch cooldown really, really quickly, due to the fact that it's really easy to have no cooldowns on her. So yeah, I think that's like six right now, seven, and then eight. So you're just alternating through all of them. Nine. Count with me. Ten. <laughs> oh no. Okay, so this is gonna slow us down a little bit. But again, I don't mind that too much. Uh, also, do you know what? One thing I also want to mention is that because I built. Poppy QT Pie as a team healer. That's going to be very useful for if we do grab aggro, but we still want to get our stacks. So I'm just going to let the team do a little bit of work for me here. Let's see, that's 12, was it? Oh, man, I lost count. 13, and 14, 15, 16. We're almost there. 17. I hope I counted properly. 18, 19. There's probably, there's probably an angry comment right now wondering why I'm bad at counting. But yeah, that's going to be that though. Like, the thing about being a water orb, uh, we're actually going to showcase for the next video, it's going to be a much more drawn out fight. We're going to be using a water orb for that one. But that's the thing about Praxis though, is that she's a very middle of the road uh, lance, in my opinion. You saw I hit like a 45,000 there, like it was nothing. And I'm going to go for the side attack. Whoa, yeah, see, that's the break. That's the thing though, like, Praxis, she's a very middle-of-the-road Mega Lance user, but she's very easy to use. Again, once you get max affinity, that's 100% extra on your attacks, and then that's going to be um, an additional 50% accuracy, which is super useful. You're not going to be missing very often with this setup, uh, just by having max affinity. And, do you want, let's try to build the, the special that does extra damage from the side. Okay, so I'm going to wait for him to use this, so he has the evasion... And that's going to be very annoying. The th that's the really funny thing about fighting against these driver-type enemies. They have some really nasty evasion techniques. And here we go. Sorry, Morag, you're going to sit this one out? Because we want this fight to last quite a bit of damage. Like, in comparison to, like, Theory, I think Theory would actually do a little bit more, I believe, despite the fact that she's a tank. But that's the thing, though. You get the breaks. You're more prone to the driver arts there. But the thing is, though, is that if you want to make use of 
with your driver arts and you want to use them more often, I feel that Wolfric will be a little bit better as a Mega Lance. Not to mention, we are also using a World Tree drop. Let's see, the World Tree drop build, I feel like that synergizes better with the Veil. Just talking about the Mega Lances in general, and currently, like, the Yura common blade that I have in my party right now is also a strength modifier, so this damage might be a little bit higher in comparison to what most people have. But that's kind of the thing, though. she's a very middle of the road, like I said earlier. I believe she also has the least amount of affinity slots. The main reason why you would like her is because she's a water type, and that you can get her in a main quest. She's decent. She's not necessarily OP, like, say... Like, Veil has some pretty OP multipliers on her attacks, it's really, really good. But when you, if you just want, like, you know, a regular type attacker, I feel that Praxis could definitely be up your alley if you're just super passionate about lances. That would be the main reason why you would use her. And, uh, like, there wouldn't be much reason other than that. Of course, she's also a requirement if you want to get Theory, who, again, I've said already, she's a very, very good Chrome Katana user. Probably one of the best ones, in my opinion, I find. Like, Percival's good, but I feel like Theory slightly edits him out a little bit in the damage department. And Praxis is just that, yeah, just... Yeah, she's kind of like the the Ryu, let's just say, of of spear users. Not not nothing glaring bad, nothing glaringly bad about her, but nothing insane. Or at least I'm talking about like the Street Fighter 2 variants. If that makes sense to you guys, please no hate mail. Still though, decent blade overall, and um, just a lot of fun. Like that's the thing about most of the blades; they all play so differently, even if they're the same class. They have different focal points for their own play styles, and it's up to you guys as the players to know which one it is. That's kind of why I like to make these, these showcase videos, to kind of show off the different things. If you want very simple, no-nonsense, just get max affinity and then get damage, while also having the versatility of a water type, then Praxis is definitely someone you want to look into. Alright, I think that should be it. Let's, let's finish this guy off with a final disaster. I don't even know where this guy came from. And that should be pretty good. Anyways, guys, uh, thanks very, very much for joining me on this one. I The main reason why I made this one is because I promised days ago to do Praxis uh, for a showcase uh, since I did the Theory one, and it, it doesn't seem right to just do one of the twins. But next time, I uh, hope you look forward to it. It's a very special blade. It's a blade that people have been requesting a lot. She is also water type, hint hint. And I hope you guys look forward to seeing that one. So, as usual, I will see you guys next time. Take care, everyone.